nice satisfying loopy mud this morning. Oh, who's that? Who, who's that? Let's have a look. Oh, it's India. Hi, India. India. How are you doing? Actually, I've just had an idea. India is a singer. Hey, India. Um, are you still singing, right? What about doing a song for the end of one of my videos? Okay, that'll be fab. I think everyone would love that. If you could work on a song and send it to me. I will. I'll work on it. Thank you. See you later. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah, India is a great singer. I'll make a nice change. Behind waves of sky. I see the night before your eyes Paper buildings stand alone Behind waves of sky I see the night before your eyes And on my heart my heart Don't let me out Again Again And on my heart My heart Okay, so I saw some thick glass sticking out of the mud here and I've been investigating and it looks like it might be half of a porthole and if it is I'm going to take it back home with me because I'll be able to make something with it so I'm just levering it out you see it's really thick glass there it's stuck in the mud so let's have a look and it is look it's half a porthole look at that it's gorgeous That is half a porthole and um, I'll do something with that. I'm not quite sure what yet, but I'll definitely do something with it. Let's have a look. Lovely thick piece of glass. There we go, look. Almost clean. Now I've just seen something quite special. I'm going to walk along slowly. And see if you can see it. It's just here, look. And it is a very mangled lead aeroplane. It's got its wing rather bent, but hopefully I'll be able to unbend it later. just come across my first ever tiny little seahorse on the Thames foreshore. Here he is and sadly he's not alive. Turn him over. Oh, he's so perfect. Such a beautiful little creation. It's such a shame that he's not alive. I'm going to take it home and see if I can preserve it in any way. Well, I've just spotted a few little things here, so I'm going to go gently over the area. 
and um, you can see if you could spot them. Right, so starting here. Moving up here. So, yeah, two possible nice finds. Let's start with the more obvious one, which is here, and it might be a modern coin actually. And it is. It's a modern coin. But what is this one poking out here. Maybe it's not so modern. Maybe it's a coin, maybe it's a button. Let's see. It's probably a halfpenny. Let's go and give it a rinse and have a look. I think that's a halfpenny, and it could be Queen Elizabeth. Oh no, I think it's, it could be George. Yeah, there's a George look, you can just see his profile. It's a nice find. Now just here I saw what I thought was a glass bottle poking out of the mud um, and it had some curves on it so I thought I'd investigate and actually what it is, it's not a glass bottle but a plastic one but it, it's a plastic bear full of mud there probably from the, uh, so I don't know, 1950s, 1960s or something let's have a look at him Well, I know he's plastic, but he's rather cute, and once he's emptied of mud, I think he'll um, have a very nice home in my studio, and he's quite Christmassy too, he looks like he's holding a little present. Oh no, it's honey! He's holding honey. Okay, well, you can come home with me. See if there's any bowl on the end of this stem. There's always a whole host of birds waiting for their breakfast down here, so here's Mr Crow. Nice healthy crow breakfast. I do seem to find a lot of buttons and pipes, um, and that is a fact. And today is no exception, and I've just seen one poking out of the mud. So can you see it just down here? It 
it's just there. So let's have a look to see if anything will be revealed. Oh, yes it will. It will. Something will be revealed on the other side. Let's have a look. Oh, that's interesting. I have not seen one like that before. It seems to say something like um, vole on it. <laughs> Vol, okay. Well, that's rather nice. I like that. Ooh, what's this? I just spotted something curious down here. It's down here, see? I see a little hand and a drumstick. Feels rubbery. Let's lift off this rock and see what is going to be revealed. Ooh, <laughs> how odd. What a strange thing. Oh my goodness. Well, I think I'm going to have to give that a little rinse and take a photograph. I've never seen anything like that before. Let's go and give it a wash. You can see a little face there with chubby cheeks, but quite um, deflated chubby cheeks. Banging on a drum. That is, um, yeah, something else. take him home and give him a little wash and brush up. I've just seen a car. A little car to add to my car collection. Now the other day I found a little bulls or a horse head. I've just found an even smaller one, right there. It's true that these lead toys often are headless or bodiless. Quite rare to find them whole. I'm on my way back to the car now, but uh, I can see what looks like a little Christmas elf over here. Let's take a look. Oh yes, that is a Christmas elf. Maybe I'll, I'll pop him here and see if anybody claims him. watching. I'm here in my studio now with my array of finds which featured in today's video. Nothing that is going to cause a um, historical or archaeological breakthrough, that's for sure, but there's a nice uh, range of toys spanning from lead all the way up to modern day plastic, so we can have a look at those. Um, firstly, here is my porthole, which has also evolved slightly. Um, it was found in an area where there was a lot of ship breaking, and so um, I have stuck some glass on it and I just need to tidy it up a bit, but that will look quite nice when the light's coming through it. Um, so yes, the toys. We find a lot of lead toys on the River Thames and that day, um, or one of the things I found, was this lead 
aeroplane. It was very battered. The wings were completely folded up. I don't know if that happened before it was lost or afterwards, but um, I've managed to unfold the wings. Um, I found another one very close to that same area some time ago. And also, not far away from that area, I also found a modern aeroplane. So in the space of, what, a hundred years or so, toys really have come on from the old poisonous lead to the uh, polluting plastic. But I don't know about you, there's something about these lead toys which I really love. They just evoke um, a real childhood from the past, I think. And I wonder if any tears were shed when this aeroplane was lost. Um, we find a lot of lead soldiers as well. And similarly, these lead soldiers have evolved into plastic ones over the years. And also little mounted sort of people on horses also have evolved somewhat over the years. Um, so modern day children's toys and toys from children long ago, they still seem to end up in the river one way or another. Um, now I'm not sure what to make of this rather gruesome little chap. I'm sure at one point he was very cute and chubby faced. Um, he's not quite so cute now. He looks as if, well, he's had all the air sucked out of him. Um, at one point he was probably full of air. Uh, somebody suggested he could have been perhaps a chocolate mould. Um, or I don't know, maybe a decoration. But it does look a little bit like the little drummer boy. So perhaps a Christmassy decoration. Um, there's something quite... Uh, appealing about him, so I will obviously be keeping him, but uh, yes, what its purpose was and uh, uh, where he came from, I just don't know. There's nothing on it, there's no name that I can see, that I can trace it. So if you recognise this little chap, please let me know who he is. Um, similarly, this, <laughs> slightly more modern, probably from the 1970s, I think, eternally looking worried whilst clutching his little um, pot of honey, but possibly he was used to hold um, bubble bath, I expect. So now, having looked at these various lead toys and plastic toys, let's move on to the more inspiring find of this beautiful little seahorse. Quite sad though, of course, because he was dead. Um, I was looking at an article from 2017 um, on the internet and back then it was very rare to find a seahorse. They were quite excited about it. There had been about six sightings, I think. And now, a few years later, there are more and more sightings of seahorses, which is great because it does mean that the river is now home to a lot more wildlife than it was, um, including two species of seahorse. There's the spiny seahorse and also this one, which is the short-snouted seahorse. Hippocampus, Hippocampus. Um, now, the one that I found, I think he must have been um, cast adrift from where he was anchoring himself to his piece of weed, probably, uh, and then thrown up onto the mud, and so he died. Um, and now I have him here. I did dry him out, and he is here. A really beautiful, perfect little magical creature. There's just something so very sort of magical about tiny seahorses. Um, if you do come across a seahorse in the Thames or anywhere else, you can report your sighting to the seahorsetrust.org and they keep a database of where seahorses have been sighted. And they're fascinating creatures. I learned all sorts of facts about seahorses. Um, and I feel very um, privileged to have found one. I just hope that in the years to come, and there will be more and more of these beautiful, magical little creatures living in the river. There's supposed to be about 126 species of fish in the Thames now, so it's great news. And it reminds me too of when um, our dog Misha met a seal in the river um, several years back. So the Thames, although it doesn't always look terribly clean, it's a lot cleaner than it was, and there's a lot of wildlife in there. So that's my seahorse. Now on the subject of tiny horses, I really hope you'll indulge me now because it's the perfect opportunity for me to just tell you a little bit about some tiny weeny 
horses in my mudlarking find collection, which some of you will have already seen, but it's another excuse for me to get them out and show them to you. Um, some tiny horses on pipes that go from very, very small to even smaller to almost microscopic that you can hardly see under a magnifying glass. Um, some time ago, I found this pipe here, which has the head of a horse as the heel. Um, it's beautifully detailed. When I found it, it was um, completely black and you could see the glistening hairs and it just looked like black beauty. Um, and then, more recently, I found this little tiny chap um, galloping up the uh, pipe stem um, here. Again, so much detail on it, uh, made by the Wynne Gender Frère, I think, in Belgium. It's got a maker's mark WF, but absolutely stunning. So another tiny weeny horse. Um, and then, quite the, the, possibly the smallest little horse I've got in my mudlarking collection is actually on the heel of this pipe. Some time ago, I was going through my pipe, sort of putting them in piles, and I noticed something, a little splodge on the bottom of the heel here. And at first I thought I was seeing things when I looked at it under the magnifying glass and thought it was just a, a bit of a, a fluke a shape, which looked vaguely like a horse. But when I had a closer look, and when I put it out there and asked some other people, it was confirmed that indeed, on the end of this heel is a tiny, weenie, rearing horse, little maker's mark. So, uh, talking about tiny horses and seahorses, I thought, yes, I can get those out again and tell you about them. And of course, there's the tiny little horse head that I found as well, which um, fits in very nicely to the theme of tiny horses. So I wanted to also mention, of course, that you'll have noticed the lovely music featured on today's video, which is courtesy of India Blue Golding. She goes under the name of India Blue for her singing and songwriting. And um, I was delighted to bump into her as she was cycling on the way to work. And she is my first studio guest. I was able to ask her a few questions. So you're going to meet her in a minute and listen to a little bit more of her music. But before that, I just wanted to wish you all uh, an extremely happy, joyful and peaceful Christmas if you're celebrating Christmas this coming week. And if you're not, I wish you an equally happy, peaceful and joyful week. Thank you again for all your support over the last year, your comments, suggestions and feedback. Um, if you've enjoyed my videos, please subscribe for more. And I'm very much looking forward to um, doing more videos for you next year in 2020. So thank you very much. And let's go and meet India Blue, who is, I'm sure, an up and coming superstar singer. So India, thank you very much for coming in to the studio to meet me today. And it was great to see you the other day. You were on your bike on the way to work, weren't you? I was indeed, yes. Do you ever feel tempted to jump over the fence and go down in the mud when you drive <laughs> past the river like that? <laughs> Every day, all the time, just want to swim to work. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a little bit dangerous. <laughs> But um, no, you're singing, which is absolutely beautiful. And we've just heard some of it on this um, video. Yes, and I'm sure that everyone you. will appreciate it a lot. Uh, when did you first start songwriting and singing? Because you write your songs, don't you? I do, yeah. I never really know how to answer this question. Um, I remember singing when I was pretty young, when I was about six or seven. Um, and I kind of just stopped for a while and then started singing again at about 15 on and off. Um, and since I've been at uni, uh, which was about, I graduated a couple of years ago, I've started songwriting and just implementing songwriting and singing more into my life. And Excellent. Being more creative. Excellent, that's brilliant. And. Um... Is there, what is the inspiration behind your writing? Um, I'd say often I'm inspired by beautiful landscapes, um, just staring at the sky um, and water a lot of the time. I think being yeah. close to like being in the ocean or being in a river. Being by the river. Yeah, I think 
just kind of being calm and feeling peaceful, not really overthinking it too much. Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah. And um, well, your singing certainly is peaceful and calm. Oh, and it fits right you. in um, to the river theme. Yeah. And um, in terms of singers, do you have any particular singers that you're inspired by that you love? I do. I think I'll have to name two because, um, yeah, they're equally important to me in different ways. Uh, the first one has to be Donny Hathaway. Um, I love the rich quality of his voice, just, yeah, so warming and moving and so impressive as well. And like, mm. I, I haven't met or I haven't experienced another singer who kind of sings in that way. And the second one um, is also a favourite singer of mine, Astrid Gibalto. Um but yeah, for different reasons, she has a much more kind of simple style. But I think that can be equally as beautiful in another mm. way. Um, and I feel like she has kind of taught me that recently. You don't always have to kind of fill every space and sing really powerfully. You can yeah. kind of just keep it simple sometimes and it is effective, you know, in a different but beautiful kind of way as well. Oh, excellent. And do you perform as well on occasions? I do, yeah. I have been doing, I'd say, about one gig a month this mm -hmm. year. And I try to go to open mics when I have the time and get the chance to. Um, mainly in the kind of South East London area. I'll do that, yeah. Oh, excellent. And do you have a particular a person, the same sort of person who accompanies you on guitar? Yeah, um, my friend Stefan, my lovely friend Stefan Haravello, uh, often accompanies me on the guitar. Also have another friend, um, Mikel, who also accompanies me when he can. Um, yeah. Oh, brilliant. And where can people go to listen to more of your music? Have you got anything on social media, or a website, somewhere people can go listen to your music? I do. I have a Instagram page, um, India Blue Golding is my full name and username for that and I often just post videos of yeah, music that I've been doing, over mics that I've maybe sang at and um, also a SoundCloud page um, called India Blue and I hope to have music on Spotify soon. Okay, brilliant. Well, I hope that two, I was going to say 2020, but I think it's 2020, isn't it? I hope that 2020 brings you much creativity, songwriting, and beautiful singing, and I can't wait to listen to more of it. And thank you very much for agreeing to have your songs on this Christmas video. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's been amazing. Thank you. Something in my mind tells me